Hey everyone, welcome back. In this SQL tutorial, we are going to learn how to insert data within the database tables. So in the previous tutorial, we have covered how to create the database, switch to that database and then create the table. Now, after creating the table, the database will basically hold the data. So how you are going to insert the data within the table. So that's what we are going to learn along with some of the key concepts about the insertion of the data within the database table. So let's quickly open mysql workbench right and then okay so we are on the mysql workbench now let's connect to the database so basically you'll see this local instance you can connect directly by clicking on this local instance here right the connections which are there or if you don't you know get that go to database and connect to database right so here we need to select the instance so this is the local instance that we installed and the user we which we are connecting is root user okay so select the root user by default the port will be on you know, like 3306 if you haven't changed it if you have changed this port during the installation make sure you enter that particular port here okay click on ok and it will ask you for the password the root password so i'll quickly put the root password that i provided during the installation i can save this password in the vault so that next time it won't ask me to enter the password again okay now it will open the local instance and now here we can basically go ahead and start writing the query so if you don't see this screen basically to open this screen you just click on create a new sql tab for executing the queries okay so click on that and you'll see the tab got opened and here we can write our own sql queries okay so at the moment you will see that if i simply say show data bases right and execute this query okay so click on this button here you will see these are the databases that are available okay so let's quickly go ahead and create a database and create a table and then we'll understand how to insert the data now this data that we are inserting will be using this data to learn the whole sql right so we'll keep extending this data and also learn other concepts of the sql so let me create a database and to create a database the command is create database and the name of the database right so rcv online shop is the database that we are going to create and here in the sql workbench say for example if there is some error in the query so for example i added s you will see that the error will, will be thrown right so this is another you know like good advantage that you will get to know whether your command is correct so this blue dot shows that yes everything looks good in terms of syntax and you can select that particular query and execute it right so it will create this rcb online shop database okay now let's switch to that database so i'll say use rcb online shop to switch to that database and then run it select that and run it so now we have selected rcv online shop and here in the schemas if you just refresh this here you will see rcv online shop has been created right that database is here now we are on this database so we can create the tables right so to create the table let me quickly copy this create table customer and this all of this i'll make available um on the in the comment section or somewhere uh, so that you can you know like refer to this so here let me create the table so creating table we have already understood in the previous tutorial so basically you can go through the creation of the table and the command is create space table and the table name and then whatever columns you want to add there so for example customer id what is the type data type there whether it's not null and primary key all that we have covered but we'll cover this in lot more detail in upcoming tutorial so we'll simply create this table as of now and highlight the selection of creation of the table and click on this icon to execute this script and you'll see that the table got created and if you refresh here again you will see that the customer table is created right with all the columns being shown here okay so this is basically the table creation part now the data insertion right so that's the next thing so basically how we can insert the data within the table so at the moment there is no data within the table how we can find that there is a query select and if i say star star means all okay and we can say from and provide the name of the table right so from customer so what this query returns is it returns all the data that is there within this customer table right so if i run this you will see at the moment there is no data it just shows the column but there is nothing at all null okay 
So this is how we can see whether there is data in the table or not, right? So this is very simple select query in the SQL where star means all. So select all from that particular table that will return all the data from that table that you provide. This is the table name, right? Now let me add some data there. Okay. So to add the data, there are two methods. First method is basically there is a command insert space into and then you provide the table name followed by space then the values and within the brackets you provide the values and then semicolon okay so say for example i want to insert the values into the customer table so i have to provide comma separated value for all the columns that are there within the table so now with this approach if i simply copy this i have already prepared all this data so that we expedite the overall process so if say for example i have to insert this one row which is basically having this all the details for the customer i'll copy it and then simply this so that there is a bit of space there and paste this command there all right so if i select this particular query right so select this and execute this so click on this little icon to execute that and then if i see what all data is there you will see that this particular data has been inserted right whatever values that we have provided here so the customer id the name the street etc all has been added now what is the so there are two ways so basically why do we do this way or the second way right so with this particular first method when we provide the values we have to ensure that the value corresponds to the column right so each value that you see here so for example this value that i have placed here should correspond to the column or each of the columns should have the corresponding value in this particular case so in the first case each each column needs to have the corresponding value here if i say for example i don't want to you know um, pass the street name in this case okay if i remove this and then try to execute okay this query then it will throw error that you will see uh, let me expand it here that the column count doesn't match the value count at row one right so basically with this particular approach approach number one it has to be the case that the values that you're passing should match the number of columns that are there okay now the second method is basically to insert so let me insert this value as well okay we are preparing this whole data so let me insert this as well i'll select the second data set and the second column should get or the row should get added as well right so this row john k has been added as well okay so now say for example uh, we'll take this second example okay so in the second method what the flexibility is and this is this is what i usually you know recommend that you can provide the column names and the values that you want to insert so say, say for example there are 10 columns and i want to insert values and i want to you know in, in do not insert the say for example uh, street right because a street can be null uh, because we there is no constraint not null so city can be null so if i do not want to insert these values then i can specify with the second method i can specify customer id customer name as the column name and i can skip street city etc and avoid adding street and city right so if i don't want to add those values so with the second option i simply need to have the command insert into customer and then the column names that that you want to insert the values to and then followed by space values and in brackets the value that you want to enter okay Okay. so with this approach if i simply copy these values here and paste them here okay okay so here you can specify the values and just comma separated each row will be a separate set of value right with this approach the first one you have to type in insert into customer values and then every time you have to keep doing it with this one you just specify the column names where you want to insert which particular value and the values and comma separated values and then once you are done with the rows then end the sql statement with the semicolon okay so if i select all of this now five rows should get inserted three four five six seven okay so select it execute it and then again if i select all the data from the sheet or from the table you will see all of the values are there so one two three four five six seven 
and this is the another one which I added. Okay, so you can see all the data has been added there. Now, what is the flexibility of this second approach? Okay, let's see. So the flexibility is say, for example, I do not want to add this city, right? Or street. Okay, so what I can do is I can say I can remove city and street from here. Okay, and let me not modify here. Let me copy it separately and modify here. Okay, so I do not want street and city. I'll remove this in the column and then from the value as well, I'll remove. Okay, so let me remove all of this. Just keep one value there. Okay, and now if I try to, you know, run this. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay, because in the columns, I have reduced the number of columns and the values are more. Okay, values are basically containing the street and city as well. So let me execute this and you will see that column doesn't column count doesn't match value at the row one right so it again checks what columns you have mentioned and what values are there okay so with this we can simply remove the city and street and now the column values correspond to the column name that you have provided here okay so customer name um, the country zip code etc and now this query should be fine right okay duplicate entry right so because this aa07 is there so let me change it to 11 and this time should work okay okay all right so these are some of the key things that you need to know like read error code right data too long for column customer id at row one why is this error because when we defined our table the it is it holds only up to six characters right where cat so this is more than six right three three six and seven so we need to change it right we need to make it six so now you will see one row got affected and this time it added the data successfully even though there are two values or two column doesn't contain any value okay so if i run this select query now okay and expand this you will see that this particular column or this particular row is there wherein street is blank and city is null uh, and blank and all other values are being successfully saved so basically with the second approach the advantage is that if i want to insert the values i can specify the columns where i want to insert the value right this will be true only if you have selected say for example not null or if, if you have selected not null then that means this particular value should not be null okay so every time country needs to be there customer name customer id needs to be there so even with the second approach if i say i do not want to add the country right so i cannot do that because in the table definition i have said the country should not be null right so if i try to change it in this case let's say for example i do not want to add the country as well then it should throw me the error because country is basically mandatory right so field country doesn't have a default value right so this will throw me an error in that case so we can use this query the second approach for the values that are basically that will accept null values and if you do not want to populate those values so for example zip code phone email street and city in this case in this particular table all right so this is basically what or how you are going to enter the data within the table right and this is the data that will be you know extending and i'll be populating some more data in this particular table and then we'll start learning how you can basically write the sql queries to fetch data in and learn sql in much more advanced way so that's all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching